y'all doing? We're close. If you guys want to get ready. My name is Chris Hernandez. I'm with City Communications. Uh, we're going to have a media briefing for you. Uh, we will start with the Mayor Sly James, then City Manager Troy Schulte. We'll be able to drill down on some of the details of our action plan for handling this storm. And as you can see, we have uh, several other uh, folks from the city who can help out uh, if you have really serious questions that drill real deep. So, uh, Mayor, if you want to get started, thanks sure. a lot. Well, first of all, good evening and thanks to everybody for being here. Uh, we have some important messages for the Kansas City community. Uh, tomorrow is probably going to be the most intense winter storm that we've seen so far this year. Um, at 8 o'clock, people may think that there's not that much snow. They can make it to work, whatever the case may be. Um, and then um, uh, you'll probably make it in okay, but once you get there, then the heaviest snow starts to fall around 10, uh, between 10 a.m. and 6 p.m., and you may have some difficulty getting home, to say the least. It could be very tricky getting home uh, late in the afternoon tomorrow night. I would hate to see, and I know that all of our first responders and our drivers would hate to see people stranded on the road or worse. So we're asking everyone who can, who can possibly stay home, to go ahead and do that if they can. Uh, this storm is expected to bring 6 to 10 inches of snow. Uh, there will be strong winds of between 10 and 25 miles per hour. This could cause whiteout conditions. Uh, these are conditions that are not necessarily optimal to be driving in. I certainly wouldn't want my family out driving in them, and I don't want others out driving them either if they can avoid it. Furthermore, aside from the road conditions, the temperatures will be dangerously low, and they will stay that way, including into Wednesday and Thursday. So please stay inside tomorrow. Uh, so that means getting your prescriptions filled today, stocking up on whatever items you may need to stock up on today. And it's also important that you prepare and get your pets inside as well. Pets left outside uh, in this type of weather is considered animal cruelty and we'd be dealt with in that way. A few housekeeping items for public uh, need to know. Parking off street during the snowplow operations really does help and really enhances the ability of the people driving those plows to remove snow, uh, snow especially in cul-de-sacs and dead-end streets. If a vehicle must park on the street, then please exercise uh, caution, but also ignore the signs that may tell you to the contrary. But in these conditions, uh, when you're parking on the street, if you're on a north-south street, then park on the west side of the street, the side towards Kansas. When you're on an east-west street, park on the north side street, the, par the side towards downtown. Unless you're north and then... <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, yes. Yeah. Well, just park on the north side of the street if you're on the east west street. Uh, we'll have snow crews out, and they're out preparing for the storm now. They're treating uh, the key main streets and responding to slick street requests uh, from 311 call center now. Uh, but I want to make sure that everyone understands we have 6,300 lane miles of road to clear every time it snows. Uh, that's no small feat, but thanks to the people who are dedicated and work hard in our public works departments, they get it done each and every time, and they do a very good job of doing it. We'll have 175 snow plows for primary and arterial routes, 65 additional plows for residential areas. City crews assigned to primary and arterial routes will be split into two 12-hour shifts to provide around-the-clock coverage beginning on Tuesday, February 4th at 7.30 in the morning. Crews and residential snow routes uh, will also deploy their trucks and routes on Tuesday morning at 7.30 a.m. and work 12-hour shifts during the day until those zones are clear. On residential snow routes, city crews using smaller trucks will work 12-hour shifts during the daylight hours to provide a passable lane. Now, all of these things can be found on our website under kcmo.org snow to help you out. Cul-de-sacs and dead-end streets will be plowed after arterial collector and through streets or residential streets are plowed. That's because the idea is to take care of those streets carrying the most traffic 
as much as possible and move to those streets carrying the least at the latest opportunity. This ensures that the city crews will be able to use their resources most effectively and efficiently. We're strategic in our efforts when inclement weather strikes the region, and I know that inclement weather brings frustrations for people, get upset, it's inconvenient, it's inconvenience for everyone. But I'd really rather be sitting at home frustrated and inconvenienced than stranded in a ditch. So if you stay home, you might not have that last problem. Um, if you must venture out, please take extreme caution. Be smart, be quick, get home safely, and don't try to get too far too fast. For this particular storm, residents wanting to report slick spots or missed streets to the city's 311 call center, please wait until Wednesday to do so. Give us some time to get to the area. A lot of things are going to be happening, and we're going to try to take care of those main streets, arterial streets, first so that we can make sure that the most people, including emergency vehicles, ambulances, fire trucks, police, will be able to get it around the city in a much more efficient way. And also, we need the snow to actually stop uh, falling for a while before we can take care of everything. So while crews are running assigned snow routes, it's assumed that all streets are slick. Only after the snow has stopped falling and all snow routes have been run does the city's 311 call center accept requests for slick spots and missed streets. Also remember, please, that it is the responsibility of the property owner to clear sidewalks of snow and ice, not the city. People who have the sidewalks in front of their homes, in front of their businesses, in front of their shops, in front of their restaurants, it's their responsibility to clear those sidewalks of snow and ice. And finally, please visit uh, kcmo.org slash snow to view the GPS snowplow map and you can see where the snow plows actually are, where they're moving, and where they've been, and how long it's been since they've been there. And you can also find other snow-related questions as well. Now, we'll take questions for anyone that's here uh, on any subject related to snow. Well, the city manager and I, along with all of the other gentlemen and ladies that have been here today, have discussed that. And what we're going to do is exactly what we said, encourage people to use their heads, stay home if at all possible. We'll monitor the situation uh, going forward and make sure that if it gets to a point where we feel that's necessary, that's what we'll do then. But we're not doing that at this moment. Troy, do you want to say anything? Yeah, I, we'll continue to monitor the situation. Uh, it's a significant snow event, six to 10 inches, but it appears that it may come down over a broad period of time. If it can, the city might be able to keep up with it. So we're gonna try to figure out as, this, as it develops, the situation develops tomorrow, late tomorrow morning and early afternoon, whether we need to take uh, unusual measures uh, to deal with it. Are you intending to be um, telling people if they're not parked on the sides of the streets and so forth that you mentioned, Mayor, to make sure the roads are clear? Oh yeah, I'll give it yes. to me. <laughs> yes, uh, we will be enforcing our uh, all of our snow uh, policies. Phase one, phase two of our snow remove, uh, snow uh, emergency snow ordinance will be in effect, and uh, cars uh, that are blocking access will be uh, will be to ticketed and towed. And, and I think it's important for all of us. Again, keeping with the spirit that we've established in this city, tell your neighbors. You, you know, when you get home and you see somebody parking on the wrong side of the street, tell them the, uh, what the deal is, help them out, because snow plows are pretty big things. And we can't send them down narrow streets so that they're bumping and running cars off into ditches and creating damage. So the choice is either we can have cooperation and collaboration on parking on the right side of the street during these things and get the streets partially plowed, or the streets won't be plowed and the cars that are obstructing will be towed. And that's not the optimal solution to the problem. Yeah, absolutely. The, the, uh, what we've learned in the past is that the arterial and the feeder routes, the ambulances can get to 
Uh, but some of those uh, side streets are more difficult to do. So, so we've implemented phase two of our emergency uh, snow plan, and that is that we'll have on uh, extra four-wheel drive vehicles uh, to, to do that, to meet the ambulance there as far as they can go and then to bring those patients down where needed. Uh, so that, that's, uh, uh, we've also, that, that uh, phase two of the snow plan also uh, puts uh, additional call takers in our communication center uh, additional supervisors to handle those uh, extra four-wheel dive vehicles as well. So should people feel confident that no matter where they are, if they have an emergency, they'll... Absolutely. They should feel confident. The, the reason that for that is is because uh, we know that we can handle, uh, our ambulances can travel in snow up to eight inches. When it gets to eight and ten inches, it be, that's, that ambulance begins to plow that snow itself and then begins to get stuck. So we know that, that the arterial and the feeder routes are okay to to maneuver on. It's when we have to go onto the side streets that aren't, but we've got a plan in place to take care of those things. How many of those four-wheel drive vehicles do you have? Seven of them. And what provisions are the buses making to deal with this storm? Um, yeah, I think we are prepared at ATA for this storm as well. We will also, in, in addition to the um, snow crews that the city manager and the mayor mentioned, we have seven of our own trucks that will be out working on areas that we know are particular trouble spots. Um, we have coordinated with the city and public works um, the hills and areas that we also have problems with so uh, they know where to help us when we get there. Um, last year when we had that snowstorm that we had some buses stuck, one of the biggest issues was they were stuck at the curb um, and just simply needed a push. So this year we've got two buses with chains on them with special bumpers that'll just simply be able to push them out from the curb. Uh, we think that'll help us get around the system as well. And we are trying some new tires on about a half a dozen routes this year, or half a dozen, half a dozen buses this year. Um, so I think we'll be ready. Uh, our crews will be out starting at 6 o'clock in the morning, working around the clock for the next two days. And um, we know the spots we have to be at, and, and we'll be working on those roads. And our intent right now is to operate full service. Um, we know that when we get into late afternoon, we may have to look at a reduction of some kind, but um, right now our intent is to operate full service all day. Correct. And what we'll, we're asking is uh, all uh, city offices will be reporting to work as normal. Uh, we will continue to, but we have canceled all public meetings. So again, we're trying to make sure that if you don't have to travel, uh, you, you shouldn't have to uh, inter interface with uh, city government. You don't need to. Uh, you don't have to do it on Tuesday tomorrow. So, but all of our folks will be here uh, to deal with issues as they arise, and we'll just kind of keep it. Uh, uh, we'll keep it flexible as we work through the through the morning, and depending on how the snow comes down, and what the impact is, we'll we'll adjust accordingly and try to let everybody know what what the plan is. But at, to the mayor's point, you can help us a great deal if you don't need to travel, stay home, and if you can get those cars off the roads, uh, get those cars off the streets, park cars off the street, that'll help us in our snow removal efforts. So I think that's what we're here to stress: is you can you can be a partner with us tomorrow as we go through it. I will mention that as we go through, we will always have warming shelters available. It's supposed to be very cold on Wednesday and Thursday. Uh, wind chills 15 to 20 below zero. So we will maintain at least three community centers. Southeast Greg Kleiss and Lion Creek will be open as uh, for all throughout the event regardless of the, the conditions. And then we will use our community centers uh, as warming shelters if necessary if the uh, cold stays on a protracted level. So we're going to provide those basic services uh, all city employees should report to work as planned, and we'll we'll work through it like we always do. Repeat those uh, warming shelter locations. <clears throat> Lion Creek Southeast Community Center and uh, Greg Kleist Community Center. Thank you. Are they going to be open twenty four seven? No, they will be open their normal hours, and we will maintain those regardless of the conditions. Okay. And is the EOC going to be open? EOC will begin. Will be open tomorrow, beginning at seven a.m., and then we'll, it'll be open through the duration. Yes, and we'll, we, we chatted a little bit about that as to terms of how this situation warrants it. The weather sh should start to see some worsening around 10 or 11, so we'll probably try to do something around that time, but we'll finalize it. We'll just continue to monitor the events and let people, try to keep people informed. Can you clarify the towing situation as well? 
Yeah, the, no, let me, the, the towing situation is, if you're on emergency snow routes and you're blocking access, they will be towed. We will not be towing immediately in the residential neighborhoods unless we've got an access issue, obviously for public safety standpoints. And to the mayor's point, parking on the north side or on the west side, uh, again, even if it's uh, a designated no parking issue, we will look. We won't bother those issues as long as you're cooperating and getting the getting the cars on one side of the street so we can get the plows through. So we'll be a little judicious, judicious in the use of our plowing, but we will maintain those those major routes and keep those clear. One last thing I, I want to say is is that last time we had this situation with snow, we had people who were doing some extraordinary things helping out Kansas Cityans, uh, people who went out and took in busloads of people into their homes when they were stranded or served people in hot chocolate, whatever the case may be. So we want to keep that up. So uh, as you're out and about, if you're out and about or if you ha find yourself helping someone to do something, tweet that out for us and use the hashtag KC Helps. And then we can share those good stories and uh, with everyone and uh, show people what type of heart we have here in Kansas City, and that'll be a good thing to do. Okay. Anyone else? Any other questions? We're encouraging people, if they can possibly stay home, to stay home. And we're having city employees come in because city employees are responsible for doing a lot of stuff in the city. And we need to make sure that we have the full cadre of people on hand to get those jobs done. As soon as we can, we'll be releasing them to go home. But we have a lot of stuff to do. And generally, people don't uh, particularly care uh, if we um, um, are not there. So we're going to take care of our business and provide the services to the people of this city that they deserve until we need to send our folks home. And I want to thank all of our city employees, especially those that will be out there uh, collecting garbage, uh, hanging out uh, in snow plows, uh, braving ridiculously low temperatures. Uh, you know, not being fully appreciated by the people of the city sometimes for the service they do provide. Uh, just remember, uh, we plow the equivalent of San Diego to Boston and back every time there's a snow. That isn't done in 15 minutes, okay? This isn't a city with five city blocks and 15 snow plows. This is a city of 316 square miles, 6,300 miles, and about 200 trucks and our people do a tremendous job, so give them a chance and they'll show it to you, okay? Nothing else? Thank you very much.